I have felt a lot of self-consciousness over time about when I go on a rant about my reads of, say, the, the BDSM boss fight in Metal Gear Solid 1 or the pet play scene in Metal Gear Solid 5 or the, the parental relationship that is, uh, uh, that is told on screen between Big Boss um, and Miller. And I felt self-conscious that my rants come off as very, you know, unprofessional and, you know, just kind of like I'm giving my thoughts. I do not feel bad anymore at all, okay? Because those are just literally the most, like, I realize that I am like a towering titan of originality compared to these fuckers. The fact that I can just like, that the fact that I'm willing to turn on my camera and just be like, hey, here's what I think about that. I played this scene last night on a video game that I'm playing. Here's my thoughts about the queer subtext in that scene. Hope you guys think my thoughts are interesting and that that's the content that I put out and 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 other people are just like fucking stealing entire books because they're so self-conscious about their own fucking creation. They want to make money off of somebody else's work. Actually insane. Wait, what pet play in Metal Gear Solid 5? Do we have to do this? Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it live. We're doing it live, okay? I'm doing it live, okay? It'll it'll be it'll be quick, okay? It'll be quick, all right? It'll be real quick, okay? We got to use footage that was captured, okay? This is uh this is this is captured by the uh by Phoenix Justice, okay? Here we go. Thanks, Phoenix Justice, for capturing this footage. It's raining. Oh, just wait, just wait. I love this scene so much. Okay. Thank you once again. Thank you once again. 
to Phoenix Justice for capturing that footage for us, okay? Thank you so much. By the way, um, many, I can see, I can see that many of you are blinded, blinded by the sins of the past, that you've forgotten how to take a scene in for yourself and analyze it on your own terms. I see so many of you repeating lines from the text that you read in journalists elsewhere. She breathes through her skin, you say. Why is the nudity? You need to make excuses, but you don't. No one has to make excuses when there's good writing on the screen being told to you right there. Visual storytelling of a beautiful level, okay? How was that pet play? Are you serious? Are you motherfuckers serious? I can't believe that I'm interrupting my drama mama right now. Just kidding, I totally believe it. And so do you because you're in a dra you're in a demon mama stream. Of course I'm interrupting the drama mama to talk to you about the queer implications present, the BDSM implications present in a Metal Gear Solid game. Let me just tell you, just take a second. Just take a minute. Hold on. Let me explain. Hold on. Quiet is a experimental bioweapon person, okay? Quiet has been traumatized and mistreated by the enemy faction in the game, okay? Quiet tries to kill you, and you beat her in a fight. And instead of killing her, you spare her life. And, um, but, and you actually bring her back. It's because she respects the fact that you spared her life and she's like, huh? I don't understand. And um, she can't speak. That's another thing. She can't talk. And when you bring her back, uh, your, the, 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 the other dad of your, of your military unit, okay, Miller, is like, I don't trust her. Put her in a cage. So he makes you put your pet in a cage. And for the entire, for most of the game, Quiet, or the I should say the first quarter or third of the game, Quiet is in a ca like a big kennel. And she actually seems fairly happy in there overall. And you eventually uh, ignore Miller and you let her out of the cage. And so then she follows you around everywhere and does whatever you want and happily plays with you. And this is one of the scenes in which in which uh, you let her play in the puddle and she plays with you and splashes you with water and you, the pet owner, play along with her. You get to see Snake go, what's going on here? Oh, I see what's happening. I'm gonna play with my pet. She's literally in the pet menu. When you're playing the game, you go into your codec and you have a choice between a pet dog, a pet robot and quiet. She's in the pet menu. And nobody could see this. Nobody could see this for the entire time of the history of this game because they were too busy being like, why is her skin like that? Why does she wear a bikini? She's wearing a bikini because in the language of the game, she's a pet. She's a, 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 an adopted animal that was traumatized and you take her in and she gladly becomes your pet. How could you, how could you miss it? Oh yeah, your horse is also in that menu. It's a dog, a horse, a robot, and quiet. There's multiple scenes, by the way, throughout the game, um, where your relationship her with her is framed as a relationship with a pet. And some people will be like, oh, isn't that objectifying? Only if you're an idiot. Only if you cannot get yourself out of your Twitter-brained frame of reference and instead engage with a text. If you're actually able to engage with a piece, you would actually realize that in the text of the story, that is, that is, that is Quiet's character. She's a pet and she likes being a pet. And part of that, in part of your growth of the relationship with Quiet is learning how to treat her well, making her happy in her role as a pet. It's incredibly wonderful and it's very obvious to me, but maybe that's just because I have pets. Her, her, her you, oh my God, it's so wild. Do, do, do you understand now? I know I'm 100% correct. I, I play 
this is why I, I fell in love with Kojima games. Because when I play them, it's like, it's like I'm, I just, they just make sense to me, okay? And people go, what are you talking about? And then I explain it and they go, oh my God, you're right. I know that I'm right. There's like so many aspects. I could go on about this all night. Um, like the, the, fa the fact that you communicate by like whistling at each other. You literally call her by being like. <whistles> playing in the water. Oh my God. Thank you. Now it's ruined it. It's ruined er for me. How could this ruin the game? How could this how could it ruin how could that reading ruin the game for you? It makes it more beautiful. I actually it actually infuriates me that if you try to look up Metal Gear Solid 5, it's just a bunch of like intellectually impoverished idiots writing for fucking BuzzFeed and Kotaku being like, um, actually there's problematic elements in this game. The characters are very sexual and they're sexual to each other sometimes. And I'm just like, yes, they all are. That's part of, the, it's a fictional universe and Kojima is a horny guy and he made a very sexual universe that talks about those types of things. You fucking idiots. All of Metal Gear Solid is ridiculously erotic. There is so much sex in the game. All of the characters hit on each other. All of them, uh, it, it's, and pe uh, it's just so annoying. It get, I get so annoyed when people can't actually engage with fiction on its own terms, and instead they read their own insecurities and their own, um, like, political hangups and their own, um, uh, their, their own, like, uh, what's the right word? Their, their need to, like, virtue signal at all times into every single piece of text. It drives me absolutely crazy. There's so much in Metal Gear Solid. It's just off the chain how much there is. Like I talked about this last time. The fact that um, the like one of the first missions of the game is you carrying your best friend, your best friend on your literal back. He's like naked. Uh, he's like naked and beat up and delirious, and you literally carry him on your back. And the scene that follows is him uh, cr tearfully feeling guilty for the fact that. Um, he blames himself for all of the hard stuff that you've gone through and your boy and, and your boy, I mean, your, your, your buddy who also lost his arm, you bond over the loss of your arms and the loss of your past. And then you pick him up. You physically, you, you physically pick him up off the ground and put him in his seat. And then he comes in really close as if he's going to kiss you and promises you he'll give you the world. He literally says, I'll give, I'm going to, I won't stop until I get everything that was taken to us and more. And then you go on to literally be parents and have arguments about how you think you should raise your children. Not even kidding you. And yes, I do know about Peace Walker that you can have, that Big Boss and, Ka and Kazuhira Miller can have sex. Yes, I know about that. Okay. I I got more worked up than I intended to. This is going to be a real wild ride for all of the all of the drama streamer people, all the drama stream viewers, all of the drama mama audience who were like, "I'm here for drama mama." And then they're going to get to this point, they're going to be like, "What the hell just happened?" And they're going to get absolutely uh, they're going to get absolutely gay pilled on the best take that you've ever heard about Metal Gear Solid 5, which will make you enjoy the game more. It's really funny. If you play Metal Gear Solid 5 with all those like outdated, extremely weak and pathetic and uh, intellectually lazy articles about how it's problematic that Quiet is in a bra the entire game, uh, uh, like if you have that in your mind, you will enjoy the game less. And, and, and if you go in with the Chad mentality that you're playing a game that's that's show that's depicting a loving, 
a potentially loving, depending on your actions, if you, you know, a potentially very loving and rewarding pet pet owner relationship, uh, you will actually unironically enjoy the game way more, and you might it might even become one of your favorite games of all time. This, by the way, is why people watch Demon Mama. This, by the way, is why my streams tower above uh, everybody else, I guess. And this is why you should press subscribe down below, even if you're one of the people who came here for the drama video. It, he doesn't have to be an honorary member. He just is. Hey, uh, newsflash. He just is. He doesn't have to be an honorary, uh, an honorary m member. He just is. Oh, Jesus, Posadas John. All right, we have to actually get back to the drama now. We actually have to do that. I don't think that Kojima has ever come out as bisexual, but there seems a very high chance that, that he is bisexual. I believe it would be impossible to look at, the, at his works and the way that he engages and depicts sexuality, um, even in his social media, um, and not come to the conclusion that he is, at the very least... Uh, I, I just, I just, I don't think, you can't, you can't know what's in somebody's heart, but all I'm going to say is that, um, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't buy that he's not bisexual. I just, I just don't believe it. I, I, I can't believe it. Um, maybe he doesn't identify that way and that's totally fine. But, um, it's just regardless of whether or not you want to use that particular label, um, the label doesn't really matter. He has a deep, a, a deep appreciation for uh, uh, non-standard romantic and sexual relationships. He has a, a, a deep appreciation for uh, a beauty all across the gender spectrum that he depicts in his games. So I don't think he needs to be like an honorary member. I just think that Kojima makes queer art, like no questions asked. I would be willing to defend, I would be willing to defend that argument to my dying breath. GameFAX agrees apparently. Do you think Hideo Kojima is bisexual? <laughs> yes, the vast majority of people agree. Of course they do. I just noticed he always goes out of his way to add male nudity and homoerotic elements to all of his games. He's naughty and he loves it. He's omnisexual. He fucked everyone with his last few games after all. <laughs> Okay, everybody, we have to get back to the, we have to get back to the drama now. That was a beautiful, uh, uh, that was a beautiful, uh, little distraction, but also it proves my point. I didn't read any articles or any books about Metal Gear Solid 5, except for those old shitty ones from a hundred years ago. And when I played Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, in, was it last year? Was it 2021? I think it was 2021. When I played Metal Gear Solid 5 in 2021, I barely remembered all of that shit that people had said, and I didn't give a shit to begin with. So when I played Metal Gear Solid 5, that was just my feelings and thoughts about the game, supported by evidence that I saw with my own two eyes and an argument that I made with my own mouth. Oh yeah, also, there's another scene... Um, there's another scene, uh, where they talk about the fact that, um, that when they have Quiet living in the kennel, that Quiet just doesn't seem to care that there are other people around, um, that Quiet will just, like, shower and eat and go to the bathroom and whatever without, no matter who's around, even though she's standing in a kennel that everyone can see, she just literally doesn't seem to acknowledge it. I'm like, if that isn't pet-brained, if that's not the most pet-brained thing I've ever heard in my entire life, I don't know what is. Also, the entire game is about is about trying to get you to be, um, uh, to, 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 to rescue animals. There's the, one of the main mechanics in the game is an animal conservation mechanic where you're supposed to do non-violent uh, takedowns on animals to save them from being in a war zone. And you actually build an animal conservatory uh, as a part of your main giant base. You're telling me, 
you telling me I'm you're trying to tell me I'm wrong, I know I'm right. 